Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. Today I want to measure the maximum power of a solar panel using the EEV blog 121GW meter. This meter has a neat little feature that allows you to measure wattage. They call it the volt amp mode but you can measure DC and that will be watts and AC will be a volt amp measurement. It's a three lead measurement where you need a common point. So you have your common lead here, your voltage sensing lead, and a current lead to carry the current. So you have to have a common point in your circuit to put the negative or your common lead and another point for the current and of course the voltage. Here's a graph of a solar panel I purchased a few years ago. It's a 30 watt panel and they included this data along with it. So uh, it should match the serial number and everything right here on the actual panel that I bought. However, uh, they don't always include these. A couple other panels I bought did not include these. But it shows the current here and on this side the power for the curve showing the power and of course the voltage and this line that gradually rises up and then peaks and then falls pretty steeply is the power curve and with this panel somewhere around 19 volts the power peaks up at around 33 watts so it's normal to get a little bit more power than rated if it's a decent panel. Matter of fact, back on this date here, it's back in 2015, on a very cold day I was able to get 34 watts out of it. Solar panels are actually pretty efficient in the cold. So you can squeak a little bit more power out of them. And of course it's winter, the sun is not as high in the sky. But I did get a cold, clear day, and because the panel was cold, I got a very good output power of 34 watts. Now, if the sun was higher in the sky, I probably could squeak out 35 or 36 watts, but that's not practical because when the sun is that high, it's going to be summer, and the panel is going to be warmer, so it's not really a practical measurement. But this measurement is practical because it's something I can actually observe. Here's the solar panel I'm going to test. It's supposed to be a 20 watt panel. It's the cheapest price I've ever paid. $30 shipped off of eBay. And looking closely, it seems to be of very good quality. Of course, it's monocrystalline. See, now they're putting little jumpers little shunts on every other line and there's like a little perimeter line now that I guess that helps a little bit otherwise they wouldn't do that but uh, this is the brand new power new power uh, like I say it's supposed to be a 20 watt panel Where's the model? The serial number they put on these things. So you can uh, keep track of them. Let's see if I can get this. There's no bypass diode. These seem to be designed to be used individually, not in an array. You know, the box isn't really waterproof or anything and no bypass diode. You can always add one if you want, but they don't come with the, uh, I think they're called MC4 connectors. They just come with this jumper and they also give you a little pigtail that plugs into this so you can connect it to whatever you need to hook it up to. But anyway, yeah, I, um, the other panels, I have two other panels. I have a 30 watt and a 10 watt. Testing those under ideal conditions, I was able to exceed their rated power, so hopefully I can do the same with this one. 
So I need a way to vary the current going through the solar panel in order to test it. And you could use a high power variable resistor, but I don't have anything like that. So I'm going to use a transistor to control the current. So I have a little circuit here. Here I'm using a 9 volt battery which connects to the ends of a potentiometer. And this is a 10 turn type potentiometer. And what that does is control the voltage on the gate of a MOSFET. And that allows me to adjust the current passing through the MOSFET from the solar panel. And I can meter that current with the meter and also measure the voltage across the solar panel. And that's what the EEV blog 121GW will do. It's doing the work of two meters and doing the math for you, so it makes it a lot easier. So all, all I have to do is adjust the potentiometer and watch the meter until I hit maximum power. A couple more details on this circuit. Even with a 10-turn potentiometer, it's still a little bit touchy. You know, a little turn makes a big difference. So I'm going to add these resistors here, and I'll have to determine the value, and that should lessen the, um, the touchiness of this control. Ideally, I want to have the potentiometer near the midpoint when I do that, so I'll have to uh, figure out about what the voltage on this gate should be, and then select the resistors to act as a voltage divider for that. This resistor here is called a stopper resistor. I've had these MOSFETs oscillate in circuits like this. I was testing a power supply. When I connected up my scope, I noticed the MOSFET oscillating. So adding a stopper resistor acts as a low-pass filter. It works with the parasitic capacitance in the MOSFET and creates a low-pass filter effect and eliminates the oscillations. Because we're not worried about the switching speed, you know, this is really just a DC voltage. This can be a pretty high value. You can use a 10K or 100K is fine. I just grabbed something. I think I used a 33K. I just, you know, it was there. I grabbed it and put it in. Very important that this resistor is soldered at right at the gate pin. It needs to be as close as it can to prevent the oscillation. You can have the circuit power itself from the solar panel. You can eliminate this battery and just put this circuit in place. Last but not least is to make sure that the MOSFET can handle the power you're going to put into it. I found a MOSFET out of an old power supply I used and it's rated like 190 watts and 900 volts, something crazy like that. So it's plenty good. However, if you're measuring a pretty high powered solar panel, you want to be careful of safe operating area just because the MOSFETs rated at some high wattage doesn't mean it can dissipate that power under all conditions. So you have to look at the uh, safe area on the data sheet of the MOSFET. Okay, here is the circuit. It's just bodged together. Really only going to make one measurement with it and then tear it down. So no sense in making it real neat and putting it in a box and all that. Anyhow, the MOSFET is mounted to a substantial heat sink. You want to get your measurement as quick as possible, but it'll probably take a couple minutes. So I just grabbed a heat sink I have laying around and mounted the MOSFET to that. Here's the board with the resistors I selected. Here's the values. Uh, 4.7K and a 10K. It reduced the sensitivity to about one third, so you know, I can move the uh, dial about three times as much as I could before. So it's a little less touchy. I could make it even better, but you know, this is good enough. Uh, this is 1K if you're going to use this circuit. I'm not going to, I'm just going to use the battery. Works for me. So to test the circuit out, I have the power supply set for 20 volts and current limit at 2 amps. So I'll turn the output on. So here's the meter. As it's set, the uh, 
dissipation across the transistor. That's what we're measuring. We're, again, we're using the transistor as a variable resistor. So as it said, it's dissipating about 3.6 watts. And a neat little feature here is that it cycles between the current and voltage in the smaller display here. So you can you know, kind of monitor your circuit. And of course it does the math for you and displays the wattage. Of course, again, we're DC. So let me turn the potentiometer and increase the power draw. Turn it clockwise. The meter does not update really fast. Okay, we went into current limit. I went over 2 amps, so I'll back that down. About 31 watts. Up to 30. Should go up to 40 if I tune it in just right. Yeah, I hit current limit. I didn't, oh, we're still in current limit. The output LED is red when we're in current limit. So there we came out of current limit. Let's see, right around there, probably shouldn't go any higher. You can see we're just about at 40 watts. Now there is some loss in all this wiring, but you know, the solar panel is going to have a lot of wiring anyway, so I'm not too concerned. But I just want to make sure. Yeah, it's getting pretty warm. Definitely want to watch your power draw. Okay, I took the rig outside. I got this pointed perpendicular to the sun as much as I can. So now I just need to dial in the maximum power here. 18. Okay, it's dropping off, so I went over. So I'll go back down and see if I can get the peak. If I had one wish, I wish this would update a little quicker, as it's harder to uh, dial it in. Just have to go a little bit each time. Now this is about as good as I can get. 17 and a half watts. Now from the angle here, you can see the sun is pretty low in the sky. I don't know, I may not be perpendicular enough. I can try for even better. And it's already going up a little bit. Okay, so I monkeyed around with it, and yeah, the best I can do is 17 and a half watts. They're calling it a 20 watt panel. The size of it, though, it just doesn't seem like it would be a 20 watt panel. Let's see. A little over 13 inches. 14 and a half. Yeah, you know, my 10 watt panel is probably like out to here. Probably what I call a Chinese power figure. You know, they inflate everything. Seems more like a 15 watt size. I don't know. You know, they might be improving the efficiency slightly on these. But under ideal conditions, normally with a 20 watt panel, I could pull out. Uh, 22, 23 watts. So yeah, when I cracked this open and saw the size of it, I was kind of, hmm, is this thing really 20 watts? But yeah, yeah, I might try it next summer when the sun's higher in the sky and you know, a nice low humidity clear day would be a good time to test it. So there you have it, testing a solar panel with the 121 GW meter using its power measurement mode and a little circuit to help tune in peak power. Thanks for watching.